Let's hear it for Luke Brown and one of the great mayors in this state. We need great mayors bringing our cities back. And he's absolutely right. Uh, we're turning around the moving vans. People taking a second look at the great state of Connecticut. I kind of tell you, I kind of love this economic development summit. I'll tell you what I love about it. I spent 30 years as an entrepreneur downstate doing a lot of telecommunications work. And sometimes we just couldn't figure out what was going on in Planet Hartford. That was a long way away. And um, it wasn't that there was not a positive relationship, not that it was a negative relationship. It was almost that there was no relationship. And when uh, Immel pulled up roots and GE left, and we spent a lot of time um, saying, what was it? He said, we just didn't really have a relationship with the state. And that's what David and Alex and DECD, myself, have tried to change. Uh, Luke mentioned the word partnership about half a dozen times. And that is what we are trying to do. You know, starting with um, the amazing David Lehman, outreach, I hope to each and every one of your companies, getting a better sense of what you need, acting as a, a conduit for other companies looking into the state of Connecticut, um, uh, making sure that we can respond along the way. And uh, as Luke mentioned, you know, it was particularly tough during COVID. We had to work so closely with the business community, retail, restaurant, as we tried to reopen and tried to reopen safely. That started with a partnership, and that started with um, uh, working together. But it, but it goes beyond that. I mean, we've got uh, Colin Cooper. He's our manufacturing czar. Well, we've never had anybody specific to a piece of our industry. We're the Silicon Valley of manufacturing. We, we manufacture the most complicated stuff in the world. They come here and um, uh, manufacturing needed somebody who knew them and they knew him as an advocate within our administration for what we had to do. And first of all, what we heard loud and clear was workforce. It was workforce, workforce. We're not training people for the jobs that are out there. We're going to have a need for 50 laser welders within the next, uh, you know, 14 months. And if we can't get them in Connecticut, we're going to get them elsewhere. So that's uh, when we brought on board uh, Kelly Valeris and our Workforce Council. A lot of you were involved, I hope, in our Workforce Council. We have $100 million over the next couple of years creating those training programs necessary to make sure that if you're looking to expand, uh, you have to look no further than Connecticut. If you have a certain set of skills you're in need of, we can do it. If you have people retiring, we're ready to fill that blank. And um, I hope you take advantage of the Workforce Council. It's of um, no cost. What we need is your imagination, expertise, and, um, and maybe some folks who can help us teach these courses as we uh, ramp them out of community colleges, technical high schools, or wherever that might be. Uh, we've also added a very different relationship with our um, entrepreneurial community. Uh, from my point of view, Connecticut was the most entrepreneurial state in the country, but that was a while ago. And I said before, I think we lost a little bit of our mojo, and over the last generation or so, we've been pretty flat when it comes to job creation. We've been pretty flat when it comes to new business startups. And for that, I say shame on us, because we continue to have um, – the most educated, innovative workforce in the world. Now we've got to give them some of the tools and opportunities so they can create the next generation of companies right here in the state of Connecticut. Somebody I think here today is named Matt McCooey. Matt runs the Connecticut Innovations. Connecticut Innovations for a long time was providing some of the seed financing for help startups, uh, that little uh, bridge before um, you know, the big VCs wanted to get in the game. Incredibly successful. Uh, they've got an evergreen fund because uh, the returns have been pretty strong. You know, they could be up here in Hartford. They're down down to New Haven. And we'd open up brand new facilities for Connecticut Innovations right there, right in the heart of the state, right with a focus on life sciences and biotech, close connection to the digital and the uh, manufacturing sectors, and providing support, mentorship, guidance, as well as resources there to help our entrepreneurial economy grow. Look, I can spend all my time trying to attract the next Amazon headquarters, and we try. Uh, but there's nothing like 100 startups, um, you know, getting going every few months. Some of them hit pay dirt, and that's how the great city of Hartford comes back to life with a lot of amazing startups. Uh, you know, Luke mentioned some of the other ways that we're helping these um, folks. We got um, 
uh, Amazon Web Services and Google providing um, uh, web services um, certificates free of charge at uh, any of our community colleges. Those people who graduate, young people from any walk of life, they get the skill set, then they got a job at Infosys. They have a job at HCL. They have a job at Aetna or any of the amazing fintech and manufacturing companies that have taken themselves you know, the next run so they can compete around the world with the best talent and the best technology that we have. That's what we're able to do on the entrepreneurial side. On the other side of that office down there is um, Peter Dinius in Advance CT. And Peter in Advance CT is a formal group of uh, business leaders. And uh, you're all welcome. Uh, it's to some degree a chance for us to try and tell you what we think is important but more importantly, it's a chance for you to remind us what is really important for you. And uh, that's helped us through, um, helped us through the pandemic. Uh, you know, Indra Nui, she uh, was co-chairman of this operation. She led our reopening committee, so we had that communication uh, going forward. Um, uh, today we have um, Jeff Sonnefeld and Margaret Keene there to assist Peter Dinius in what we've got to do. And I gotta tell you, I have an ulterior motive with uh, Advanced CT. And uh, that is, uh, we have a lot of companies, a lot of companies around this country taking a second look at the state of Connecticut. And they can talk to David, you know, they can talk to me. I'm kind of a homer, though, you know, I'm kind of all in on Connecticut. Uh, they can also talk to you. And, um, and if there's somebody in advanced manufacturing, if there's somebody in life sciences, if there's somebody in the financial services space, we have... Maybe this is somebody you want to talk to. They've been doing business in this state now for uh, some years. They'll give you um, the pluses and the minuses of being here and uh, why they're here and why they're staying here. There's no better endorsement than from a peer in a similar sector. So uh, I'd urge um, any of you that are so inclined to help us out there advance CT going forward. Uh, that's how you've seen dozens of new companies uh, move to the state of Connecticut over these last, um, you know, several years. Um, finally, we do have something called 4CT, just a small reminder. It's a not-for-profit that's led by the corporate sector. You know, I'm down there in Fairfield County. Everybody thought Andrew Cuomo was the governor, and they spent all their time looking at New York and putting names on walls of Lincoln Center or something like that. Well, I like to remind people, you're part of the great state of Connecticut, and think about what we can do right here. And we've done a pretty good job, especially during the pandemic, of reminding everybody how their philanthropy makes an enormous difference for this state and breeds confidence in our communities. And these are all of our communities, including our underserved communities. And I'll just leave you with one thought, you know, I believe in entrepreneurship. I come out of the entrepreneurial world. I'm the first uh, business guy leading the state in, a, in many a generation. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to help your companies grow and expand right here in the state of Connecticut. I'm going to do everything I can to help uh, new companies get going, as I described before. And I want those new companies in Stanford and Norwalk, and I also want them in North Hartford and parts of New Haven and Waterbury. I want to make sure that entrepreneurship is shared across the board. Everybody knows they have that opportunity. And we put in place, uh, you know, a fund. I, I call it sort of the friends and family fund, you know, where, um, you know, maybe I was trying to start up a business. That first round of people that knew me and gave me some confidence, so we had some friends and family round. Well, this is a friends and family round for a lot of young people, often people of color, who may not have that opportunity, but they have that dream. And then alongside them, we provide them the technical support they've got, the growth. We accelerate our contracting at the state level, and that's how we make a difference for them. You know, one last thought as I sit around talking about what you can do and what our business community do. People look at state government, and I say, uh, physician, heal thyself. You know, I've heard about Connecticut for years, a chronic fiscal crisis, lurching from deficit to deficit, uh, you know, enough already. And uh, there, uh, we have a long way to go. I'm not putting up the mission accomplished banner, but I want you to know we've made extraordinary progress. You know, as David Lehman said, we're now pushing, this will be our third year with a surplus. And it's not, you know, federal money related surplus, it's uh, organic surplus. Uh, we've built up what they call our rainy day fund, which is close to three and a half billion dollars. You may say, well, what's that about? Just go spend it. Believe me, the legislature gave me lots of ways to spend it. But um, more importantly, what it says is when that downturn comes, 
We don't panic. We don't jack up taxes. We don't slash uh, social services. We tighten our belt, and we have the resources for steady as she goes. I got to tell you that um, we were sort of um, getting kicked around a little bit by the rating agencies for a couple of decades. Well, not now. Rating agencies have uh, you know, upgraded us across the board over the last uh, couple of years. And I'd like to think people are taking a second look at what we got to do. And finally, um, I have an amazing guy named Josh Jabal, who's the chief operating officer for the state. Came out of IBM, a little different background than some of the folks that have been in that job. We've got a lot of people retiring. Uh, they're retiring, you know, A, we're in a retirement boom. They're of a certain age. We've changed the pension calculations uh, such that on June 30, um, uh, some of them feel like they have uh, an incentive to retire as we try and stabilize our um, pension obligations. We did put $1.6 billion into the pension fund. That's never happened in history before. We're bringing down the principal for the first time. But so what Josh is trying to do is how do we rethink state government? Uh, how do we do it perhaps on a leaner platform because we won't be able to attract the, uh, the same people? Or are we going to need a different type of people with more IT skills, just Infosys and HCL and a lot of the work we're doing with them? Uh, how can we make this a more faster, customer service friendly? How can we make sure that you can go to ct.gov and get every one of your answers question, questions answered, whether you are here in Connecticut or you're, whether they are that, you know, sub that works for electric boat, but you're doing it from South Carolina and say, maybe take a second look. Maybe you ought to be closer to the, um, you know, mother planet. Uh, we uh, turning that into electronic form. Wait, first way we did it to make it clear for people was, um, and I'll leave you on this, uh, was DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles. It was really important to me. I've been through uh, a few of these campaigns now, and it's every politician's favorite. Look at DMV. You're lining up for hours. You're so slow. Um, it's, that's typical of state government. It's uh, slow, unwieldy, and inefficient. And you know what? I kind of agreed with them. Uh, so that's why um, we got a Bongi Magabani. Um, from Aetna, head of IT at Aetna. Everybody going, what are you doing with the head of IT from Aetna going over to DMV? And we said, uh, just wait. And um, I don't know if any of you had to uh, renew your driver's license later, uh, lately, but you don't wait in a long curling line, but you're uh, lying in bed, in your PJ, sipping a latte, going on your iPhone, and it gets uh, renewed. And uh, that's, uh, where, <laughs> that's it. I love it. So... Um, I'll never make you love the Department of Revenue Services, but I'm working hard on Department <laughs> DMV. Anyway, um, with that, I really appreciate your commitment to Connecticut. Uh, I'm optimistic about this state. I really think we're in the strongest position. We've been a long time. I want to make sure you're optimistic about this state because optimism is contagious, and that's how we get this state moving again, moving well, moving forward, starting with a great city of Hartford and beyond. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you being here.